And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> it is my pleasure to introduce our speaker this morning. He's witty, he's charming, and his words of wisdom leave us hunger for more. Good looking, Good looking I may add. Please, yeah, yes, just checking. You're all right. Help me welcome to the podium our own, our beloved pastor, Reverend John, the beloved. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> Good morning, family. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to those who are joining us on the World Wide Web. Um, it's just a wonderful, balmy morning here in beautiful Jamaica. And if you are feeling a little dewy, just take deep breaths and think cool. It's Yvonne Carter here. It's, it's what she's one of my temple, our temple babies, you know, and it's her birthday. Not here today, we just... Hello, Yvonne, Christina. No, Yvonne isn't a temple baby. Yvonne is a temple big smelly. Well, wherever Christi Christina is, we just know that she's growing in grace and truth, and all of our love supports her on her onward journey, as does our love for all of our young people. Friends, when I first attended the Temple of Light in 1981, I was fascinated and more than a little bewildered by the way people in the church spoke. They seemed to speak an entirely different language. I like what I understood of what I understood. But you know the way you feel when you hear fluent Spanish or French spoken, having done a little at school? You catch a few words and you feel like you could almost understand what is being said, but not quite. That's where I was. So I said to my friend, Larry Chang, who had brought me, um, boy, this, this is, I feel like I want this to be my home, but particularly the method of praying. I we think I could ever get to a point where I could pray like those people. It's beautiful, but it seemed very complicated to me. And Larry said, oh dear boy, don't worry about it. Like everything else, after a while, it will be as simple as ABC. I have titled my encouragement today, simple as ABC. And if you're visiting for the first time, or you've been coming for years and still don't understand some things, I'm hoping today's talk, following on Reverend Michael Record's exposition last week on the core concepts of science of mind, I hope today's talk will add to that, uh, supplement what he had to say, and help to clarify things for you. And speaking of ABCs, reminds me of a charming anecdote about an elderly gentleman who passed by his granddaughter's room one night and overheard her reciting the alphabet in an oddly reverent way. I can just imagine her earnestly intoning, P, you know God, like for the pets I love, and porridge, especially cream of wheat, which I can't stand. Q, Q is for, um, let me see, Q is for queens like mama. And R is for arithmetic, which is my best subject. What on earth are you up to, Polly? Grandpa asked. I'm saying my prayers, explained the little girl. In that tone of voice children use when we adults can't seem to understand stuff that's as simple as ABC to them. You, Carmen Clark bought, brought her delightful five-year-old niece on Friday who announced to me that she had a baby sister. I said, oh, that's lovely. Um, what is her name? And she gave me the name. And I said, and, and where did she come from? And she rolled her eyes to heaven and answered me in one of those tones of voice reserved for old aunties who you love but who are slightly out of hearing. Out of Rachel Clark's tummy, she said. I said, oh, that's very interesting. And how old is she? She said, zero. <laughs> Simple as ABC. If you just came out of somebody's tummy, you must be zero. So, <laughs> the grandfather was a bit bemused. He said to the little Polly, um, honey, you are saying your prayers by reciting the alphabet to God? He asked incredulously. Well, grandpa, 
I can't think of exactly the right words tonight, so I'm just saying all the letters, and God will put them together for me because he knows what I'm thinking. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings. Little Polly was, of course, stating a profound truth. There is a presence and power within us all which is always conscious of our thoughts and feelings, even if we ourselves are not. And it responds to us with absolute fidelity to our inner disposition. Ernest Holmes, who gave the world this great teaching, known as the science of mind, and who originated the technique of spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer, writes in the science of mind textbook, and I quote, no man, and when Ernest Young Holmes uses the word man, he means generic man, no man or woman, can demonstrate peace and cling to unhappiness. No man can jump into the water and remain dry. No person whose entire time is spent in contemplation of limitation can demonstrate freedom from such limitation." Unquote. So what this is saying, friends, is that I have to work on myself, and you have to work on yourself, not on God. For God is ready, willing, and able to give us everything we desire. But we have to expand our consciousness in order to receive the good we require and desire. So if yours is an alphabet of woes, with U for unworthy, V for vexed, and W for weary or weak, you are going to pray from that consciousness. And the infinite mind will respond by corresponding to what you have in your mind. This is not God being reluctant, for God is never reluctant, friends. This is the law, which is the way God works, always answering our prayers in a way that corresponds to our consciousness. And what is your consciousness, really? Your consciousness is the sum total of your beliefs, your belief system. And it really drives you and drives how you see the world and how you are in the world. One of my favorite New Thought authors, Joel Goldsmith, uh, invites readers of his book, The Art of Spiritual Healing, to, and I quote, imagine for a moment that you're experiencing an unpleasant night dream. And he describes the dream. You are in the ocean swimming. You have gone out too far. You look back towards the shore and see that there is very little hope of rescue. Even though you shout your lungs out, no one can hear you above the roar of the waves and you are seized with fear. You struggle and strive to reach the shore and of course the harder you fight, the harder the ocean fights you. There is only one thing left for you to do, drown. Yes, drown. But wait, in your fight, you shouted and someone heard you, came over and shook you and woke you up. And behold the miracle. The drowning self disappeared. The ocean disappeared. The struggle disappeared. You awakened and found that you had never left your comfortable bed. All that was necessary in order to be released from the struggle was to awaken, unquote. So you see, friends, we may be experiencing something at the human level of form, but all we need to do is wake up to the truth which is beyond the form, the truth of that infinite perfection that resides within each and every one of us. In our teaching, we use the technique of affirmative prayer to convince ourselves of the truth beyond our human circumstances and experiences. It's really as simple as ABC. In his book, The Power of Now, Eckhart Tolle explains the difference between your life and your life situation. And I want us to get this. There's a difference between your life and your life situation. And this difference applies to the way we, in the science of mind, pray. I want you to listen really carefully to this because it's very important. If you get this, you will have grasped the ABC of affirmative prayer. Tully says that your life is that universal energy 
that place of infinite potential being consciousness or love. Your life is that universal energy, it's unchanging, that place of infinite potential, that place of perfect being, that place of consciousness and love. Your life situation is anything that you experience in the human realm of form. It is your experiences, your circumstances, your physical body, and your perceptions. So learn this today. Your life never needs to be healed. Your life is already perfect, complete. There is an essence of you that is whole, perfect, complete, abundant, prosperous, and joyous. Yes, there are also experiences in your life at the human level. A medical diagnosis and the prescribed treatment, a damaged or broken relationship perhaps, a cash flow challenge, and so on. But friends, there is an essence beyond your experience, and this we need to hold to very firmly. There is an essence beyond your experience. There's a perfect life beyond your apparently imperfect life situation. So get the difference between life Perfect, whole, complete, unalterable, divine, and eternal. And your life situation, which has its ups and downs depending on what we're giving our attention to at the moment. So the A of affirmative prayer is simply to affirm, to recognize, and to know this essence that exists beyond our life experience. The A then is the aff affirmation of the truth of your life. The B of affirmative prayer is to believe in that blueprint of original perfection that is the truth of your being. Believe in the truth of your wholesomeness, your wholeness, your holiness, and your perfection. And the C of affirmative prayer is to claim this power of your life which exists beyond your life situation and is untouched by anything that you may be experiencing at the moment. Author Neil Donald Walsh, in his book, God's Message to the World, writes, and I quote, your energy has the power of a magnet. Remember that even feeling, actually, especially feeling, is energy. And in the matter of energy, like attracts like. He continues, the idea is to step into the application of the power of God, not a supplication to God that the power be used. God's invitation is to utilize the confirmative power of prayer, that's the C, the claiming of your good. And this shift from supplication to application, to affirming, believing, and claiming your good can be miraculous, unquote. When you understand then the distinction between the purity, wholeness, and invincibility of your God-given life as different from the challenges uh, which you face in your life situation, you begin to understand that in the spiritual sense, there's really nothing to be healed. There is only God and the perfection of God to be revealed. You know, most of us grew up believing that prayer was a way of petitioning God. You know, we, we grew up learning to beseech and to beg. And when we begged and beseeched, we often wound up asking, well, why doesn't God answer my prayers? That question in itself indicates that we have placed the power outside of ourselves. In spite of the fact that the beautiful Jesus that so many people proclaim a belief in and a deep, deep need to follow his teachings, that perfect revealer of the truth said to us that the kingdom of heaven is within. And if the kingdom of heaven is within, there is no need to petition something or someone that is outside or extrinsic. Within is the location of all that is infinite. 
Furthermore, you know, when you beg and petition and plead, you are admitting to your lack of the very thing for which you are praying. And when you admit to lack, what does the universe do? It blesses you with more of the same. It never says no, it always says yes. So if you're focused on lack and you are praying from a belief and a consciousness, the sum total of your beliefs being lack or, or scarcity, the universe is going to answer by giving you more lack. When Jesus said, when you pray, act as if, you need to pray from a belief that what you are praying of already exists for you. And if it didn't exist, you couldn't even think of it anyhow. It's already yours. The table of life is already spread before you. It's a buffet, and you have to get up and serve yourself. Quantum physics is now confirming what the mystics throughout the ages have always claimed, that the outer world is simply a reflection of what we see. In other words, if we see abundance, we experience. If we see health, we experience. For the universe actually bends, shapes, and shifts to reflect back to us what we are seeing, which is why we use affirmative prayer to train ourselves to see only that which we want to experience and to know. The secret is to acknowledge that everything that is required for your abundance, your health, your happiness, your success, and love is already operating within you. The gift has already been given. And this is where a lot of people have difficulty. During challenging times or times of sorrow and pain, it may be hard to see as God sees, to see with our God vision. We may get so wrapped up in the frustration of our life situation that we cannot see the other side. And it is at those times that it is difficult for us to know that we, what we are going through is not the truth about ourselves and about our life. When you are lying face down in the mud, it's a real blessing to have someone who can see the blue skies above you know that truth for you. And this is the value of having a, a licensed practitioner of this truth pray with you when you are feeling that your life situation is overwhelming. It's nice to share it with friends too, but you know what happens with friends? They love you and they're well-meaning and what do they do? They get sucked into the situation with you and begin sharing a lot of times their own preke. You know, their own life situation. It's nice to call the life situation a preke, isn't it? Yes. So, there's a, 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 a colleague, Center for Spiritual Living Minister, known as Reverend Carol, and she sent out an ancient prayer attributed to the fifth century patron saint of Ireland, St. Patrick. And this prayer shows the simple power of a daily affirmative statement to organize our perception of how we see our life. The prayer has come to be known as St. Patrick's breastplate because he felt that it protected him from the so-called evils of the world. So the breastplate of St. Patrick begins like this, and I quote, I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's eye to look before me, God's word to speak through me, unquote. These are powerful affirmative words indeed. And Reverend Carroll asks, and I quote, how would you like to arise each day? What would you call to you each morning? And she gives some examples. Does I arise with the glory of divine life in me sound right to you? Can we say that together? I arise in the glory of divine, with, I arise with the glory of divine life in me. Let's say that. I arise with the glory of divine life in me. What about, I arise with my purpose clear before me today, together? I arise with my purpose clear before me today. I arise in the knowledge of who I am, perfect God, perfect person, perfect being. Can we say that? I arise in the knowledge of who I am, perfect God, perfect person, perfect being. 
I arise in the power of my spiritual magnificence to bless my world. I arise in the power of my spiritual magnificence to bless my world. So friends, Carol asks, what would your breastplate say to move you into your day with joy and divine power? Which of course brings me to your assignment. Your mission, should you decide to undertake it, is to, to ponder the greatest statements that could guide your day and then create your own breastplate and speak it into each morning as you awaken. Create an affirmation for yourself and speak it into your day every morning as soon as you open your eyes. And then frequently throughout the day, just pause to remind yourself of that breastplate. Joel Goldsmith said, and I quote, the correction of the belief that we are ever separate or apart from our good is the essence of true prayer, unquote. Whatever it is that you have believed to be separate from you is in fact a constituted part of your being. All the good that you conceive, therefore, is yours by divine right of being. It was already created for you before the beginning of time. It's as simple as ABC. Affirm your divinity, believe in your divine birthright, and claim your good. Can we say affirm, believe, claim? That's ABC. Affirm, believe, claim. I believe that as a spiritual community, we are positively impacting the consciousness of the wider Jamaican society, and in fact, the wider world. I am meeting more and more people, my friends, who are saying things like, I've been meaning to visit your church. I hear such positive things about what you people are saying. You know, I don't think or know that they are necessarily hearing verbatim reports of what we teach here. What I believe people are hearing is who we are being as truth students and truth experiencers and truth practicers out in the world of work and play. And I believe that what people are feeling and seeing and calling, calling it hearing is the truth that we are a loving community that honors everyone as a child of God and welcomes all those who hunger and thirst for a deeper relationship with spirit. At the memorial service for Nick Hardy last Tuesday, someone whom I met in my early visits here to the temple when I wasn't understanding much of what was being said, and who I haven't seen for years, embraced me and said, John, I'm coming back. I'm hungry for this. Perhaps this metaphor of hungering after truth is why I feel like I'm being fed spiritually when we share a meal together, as we did at our Thanksgiving celebration on July 5, two Sundays ago. I think when we get together and we share a meal, there's something happens. It happens around the family table too, isn't it? Um, it's, it's, re it's really a pity that in modern life, we grab a meal and we grab what we can on the way in or on the way out. And I, I, I really wish that more people would begin to have at least one meal a day together, sitting together and sharing, not in front of the television, watching the news and ingesting all that that has to offer, but together in a place of communion and community. And when, when we do that as a family here, I feel really spiritually f um, fed. I, I, fe I feel it when we do things like the cruise, and I'm, I'm, a lot of people have said, uh, who, who were not a member of our community, but who were on the cruise last year, that they felt really welcomed they have this energy of, of, of love from us, and I'm looking forward to seeing them again on August 1, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all too. Let us again on the, on the, in, in the harbor have a great time and, and generate that feeling of togetherness and family, which is the, the very reason for our being. Our reason really is to provide a place of shelter, a place of nurturing, and a place of spiritual growth for all those people who hunger and thirst after the right useness of this teaching. And so friends, the breastplate I have chosen to work with for myself this week is, is as follows. I arise in the heart-filling love of my spiritual family and I am spiritually fed. I arise in the heart-filling love of my spiritual family and I am spiritually fed. Would you say that with me? 
Today I arise in the heart-filling love of my spiritual family, and I am spiritually fed. Today I offer the chalice of my love to all whom I meet. Can we say that? Today I offer the chalice of my love to all whom I meet. Today I affirm, I believe, and I claim my divinity. Today I affirm, I believe, and I claim my divinity. It's as simple as ABC. And so it is. Namaste. Namaste.